Ladies and gentlemen and filmmakers around the world, welcome to the first event of International Film Operation. My name is Nilo Leon and I'm the director of IFO. Greetings from the International Film Operations. My name is Devon Gleason and I'm the producer of IFO. I welcome you. And today's event, we have our first competition. We call it the One Minute Short Film Challenge. We receive films internationally from different countries, different parts of this world, and I can't wait to see them. But before we do that, I want to introduce you to our judges. Drum roll, please. My name is Ness. I am a creative producer. I'm actually a producer of all sorts, both music and in films. I also uh, dabble in everything from uh, marketing to um, entrepreneurship mainly, because you have to be a self person, self run person to do anything nowadays. Um, and I love doing what I do is because it makes me think. It makes me um, paint a story. Uh, with you. I like, I, my, my most ideal thing that I love doing is um, creating visual content for musical uh, pieces, particularly songs, which is why I do music videos. And I don't like just to do performance videos. I like telling a story within the videos. That's how, that's my, my personal thing. And um, I just love doing it because I don't see myself doing anything else. I, I really can't see myself being at another job working. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a mechanic or anything like that. I actually dabble into mechanics myself. It's just, I am not that person that can do that for day in and day out. I would have to do something different. And that's what allows me to travel the world, meet new people, especially interesting individuals, and they actually tell me about their lives and sometimes I become inspired to tell their story through one of my projects. My name is Blondel Kingilewa and I'm a writer and director. I got into filmmaking, you know, I have to say that filmmaking has been my passion, you know, since I was a kid. Uh, I have to take a little detour doing something else before I actually coming back to it. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I used to go out with my friend, you know, after watching a certain movie, we used to just like sit down and then write a little, you know, story, you know, how we think it should continue or it should finish. And then we go out and then just play it out, you know, just between me and my friends and then just having fun with it. Hello everyone, my name is Scott Mena. I am with Mena Productions. I'm an actor, writer, director, editor, and I love film. Um, I am interested in all of those mediums because I feel like I love to watch the process of a film from beginning to end. 
So I love being a process of writing, uh, being able to create stories out of my mind, and then also to uh, be able to act in them and be able to create and evolve stories from those characters. So I, I really enjoy all of that, even the editing. I guess I like to be in control of a lot of things. So that's why I love all those process or, or all those parts of making a film. And there you have it, creators. They are the judges for the competition and can wait who is going to be the winner or the winners for this challenge. And that's not all. By the end of the night, we have something special that I think that you will be very interested in. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Making short films has been the basis in getting into the filmmaking principles where nowadays you can film anything with a cell phone now. You know, I think you're right, Nilo. The making of short films has been the basis of filmmaking from the beginning. Um, now with the development of technology, we can create films with what's in our pocket. Yeah. Uh, and this is, this is awesome. So being able to go back to the roots and even bringing it to just one minute of a film is kind of challenging, I think. But the questions remain, Tibon. Are short films still a popular thing to do in the filmmaking industry? I think so. You know, that's an interesting question, but I do think that it is very important because I, I think short filmmaking uh, creates a great place for filmmakers to develop and get better at their craft. You know what, Tibon? In one point, you are right. Making short films is something popular to do because it's like a practice, you know, until you become a better storyteller. But you have to remember that short films is just a resemble or to get into the longer films. I say, let's go to our judges and see what they think about making short films. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get this popcorn started because we got some awesome one minute films to watch. Oh yeah. I do think Short films are really important because it's an opportunity for us, you know, as a filmmaker to really see where we are, you know, where we need to, imp to improve and how we need to grow as well, you know, because, you know, we've been given, you know, just like from five to like 25 minutes, you know, uh, time just to see how we can develop a story, how we can uh, execute that story, you know, visually. And, and most important thing is like the vision that we have in mind, you know, how can we translate, like, translate that, you know, on screen. And so I do think it's really important to do it because also uh, it's just where we need to start, you know, because it's difficult to just go straight into a feature film. So this is also a good opportunity to start. And I think it's really important. I, I think it's sh super important to be able to make short films, particularly in the one minute form, because it actually challenges you to be really creative and say, do I really need this to tell the story? Or it basically challenges you and it puts you in a box where filmmaking and content creation is definitely something you cannot think with inside a box. You'll get stuck. So you have to think outside the box in order to basically evolve the vision that you're trying to create. Now, the reason I feel that sh short films are important uh, nowadays is because short films are such a quick way of 
stating something or telling a story. Uh, and in this case, doing it in one minute, which is very impressive and it's possible. Um, what I love about films is that, yes, you can get that point across in a short amount of time. As in films, they do it, you know, they stretch it out sometimes in two hours or even in miniseries where you can do it, you know, for a very long time. So I feel that this medium is so important because nowadays a lot of people don't have long attention spans. So when you get something across that's really powerful and short, it really does like pull in the audience and hopefully makes them remember your message or your story. So yes, so I'm excited to see these movies and uh, here we go. Alright, just finished watching or rewatching Balance by Aurish Duby, and I hope I didn't butcher your name. I'm really sorry if I did. But first off, just want to say some notes. I really enjoyed this story. Um, this story was spot on in talking about like karma, like one person did something good, a good deed, and then the other person took it, but actually ended up that the guy who actually left the money there actually got it back in another way. So it was really cool how, you know, kind of that karma cycle goes. And this actually inspired me, to be honest with you, yesterday I saw a $20 bill at the Walmart parking lot and I actually was going to take it and then I was like thinking about your short for some reason and I was like, you know what, somebody else really needs it, I don't really need it. So I left it on a rock by the carts and and yeah, so let's just say that, okay, your, your, your short film, your one minute short film really inspired me. Um, besides that, I really enjoyed the music as well because I felt like it brought up a lot of, you know, that the energy of, of, of something positive and um, also really enjoyed the acting and the cinematography was great. It was well lit with the sunlight, natural light, you gotta love that. But a uh, great job with this film. So the next film I'll be talking or what we're gonna be watching is Ambre by Manuela Uribe Ruiz. Take it now. 90 days, 2160 hours, 129,600 seconds. When I heard the news, I thought it was only another comment on the red. That they tried to make the fear be extreme so that people finally started to act. I was wrong. The poverty of the spirit. That's what brought us here. Nunca pudimos establecer un balance entre nuestras mentes y nuestras almas. Siempre nos jaló más una que otra. Lo más irónico es que ese no fue el problema. El problema fue la falta de conciencia de nosotros mismos, de los otros, de la humanidad. Somos seres humanos con excesos exorbitantes. Okay, so this project was very, very interesting. I, number one, I always look for sound. That's the number one thing. And you did a great job on sound, but check that room tone. And actually, I liked the rumble of it because I didn't know what type of apocalypse that we were going through when we were watching this project. I didn't know if it was a pandemic, but it looked like it was just about um, a government not really monitoring the, the food supply and the food chain and it just dried up. That's what I'm, I'm understanding from the project. I could be wrong, but from my understanding, that's what I got from watching the project. But if I didn't 
that might be something that you could add to help me understand the story. Because from what I from what I was reading and from what I saw, it's basically humanity ate itself alive. And we get like we overspent and overused and we did not conserve or anything like that which usually government comes in and steps into that all right now other points was um i love the use of basically um doing a vlog of a diary a video diary which is awesome on uh, the because you established that you had a camera there all projects that use that technique if you remember like look at my eye where i'm, I'm actually talking to this the, the person that's directing this project now I'm talking to the audience. So right now, this is more believable if I'm looking straight at you at the camera because I am talking to the person that's watching this video that's probably after my demise. That's the way I select. So I'm gonna go back to talking to the director right now and you see the difference in the, the shift that it does. This is more intimate, more personal, more telling the stories of telling of what's going on over just having a conversation with somebody. This is a different, this is just a conversation. Okay, so, and once again, another victim of time, two seconds. I beat the other uh, the other submissions over the head for their submissions being over time. Even two seconds is too long for me. You gotta, guys, have to keep it under the restraints that you're given. And if credits are that important to you, place it somewhere in the project. Figure that out. That's one of the things that, it may not look too good to you and you may think it looks jarring, but your people have to get credit. And that's the most important part about it. Even if you put them all on one slide later, people could pause the project and watch it. So trust me, do not think that that technique may not be, um, I guess, what, what, what's the word that I'm looking for? It might be above you to do. Alrighty, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed the feedback and I'm going to do, introduce the next project, which is Casting Call, submitted by Ignacio Arela Vidal. Hello, my name is Ignacio Vidal and uh, I'm a filmmaker. The way to um, uh, master your fundamentals is by making short films. That is a place where you can make mistakes, where you can learn, where you can do a whole lot of things. And uh, that will lead you the way to actually go and do a feature film eventually. Uh, filmmakers deal with actors. Actors don't like casting calls. And there you go. That It was as simple as that. Um, uh, I heard some experiences on how people were reje rejected. I got together with a, with a group of friends and we came up with the idea that uh, any actor that went to a casting call instead of being rejected, they were being killed. So, of course, as a joke, we, we use a lighter tone, but that was pretty much it. Um, it was uh, based on real life experiences, if you will. Not that extreme, but yeah. And designers have their different ideas, and then makeup artists have their different ideas. It's like models have no say in it. And once when I was in the high school, I was in the play called Caligula. Who's next? Hello. Well, let's get started. You're on the autopsy table. Action. Keep away. Stay back. Ah! Wow. That was... Too big. I, I know. I can do better. Boris. I can do it again. Just, just wait. Let me show you what. I get that part, right? Excruciating. <laughs> yeah. Wish we can Jody faster when we need her, huh? We'll let you know. All right, we just got done watching Casting Call and that was a pretty interesting one. And uh, I actually liked the concept of that short film and it was great to see that you put all this into one minute. But the two issues that I have with that, the first one I have to say is the, uh, the cinematography. You know, I think there are some part of it that you could have just add some lights in it to make it, you know, better visually and the second point is the continuity issue that i noticed and you know when the girl when you got into the interview and then she got killed we noticed that everyone else that were there 
before her, like before her, or they were already there. They all, they were all dead, you know, when they put her in the room. So it actually make no sense to me. I feel like if you have, you know, bringing those people before her and then they died, and then when she went in there, and then we noticed that everyone is also dead, it would make a lot more sense. Well, that was definitely interesting to watch. I actually uh, couldn't understand if at the beginning I was actually watching a thriller, um, some type of horror, um, but it's actually uh, almost like a PSA. Um, and I say that because to me, I had a bad problems with video games. Once I would go into a video game, I would not stop until I finished that video game. For some reason, that was just my personality. So once I got pregnant, ironically, um, actually, I said, you know what, I got to give this stuff up. And once I was having a baby, I said, got to give the video games up. And I went cold turkey and I haven't played. The last video game I played was Arkham uh, City in uh, PlayStation 3 format. So, yep, that's the last video game I played. True story. That's ironic. Uh, so um, going back to the uh, the feel of the project, love the sound, love the sound design was great. Um, the one thing that I'm going to have to say is logos, logos, logos. You can pull off that you're playing a video game without having to show the video game. You're going to have to get a clearance for that. So be careful because that'll, that'll save you from a lawsuit. I'm a producer that I always have to look for out for that and ask that question. Do we get the clearance for that? Another thing you could have showed that the a motor that was calling you could have just hung it up and then shut the phone off and then cut it to the next shot because holding it on to that movistar commercial that came up when the phone is powering down that's going to get you in trouble with movistar if you didn't uh, actually get that clearance as well so that was the two big uh, things and also um, another one was the lighting i like the lighting where you were trying to pull off the effectiveness of it being dull dark like depressing almost and that's what i really like that you, you pulled that off and the reveal about the uh the the pregnancy test was awesome i really did like in that and what i particularly like is that you decided not to use any credits at all and keep it to that one minute time so i think you guys should actually just win on keeping it time alone that's just my personal opinion though you know if you ask me so but without further ado we're going to introduce our next project called el escritor submitted by sebastian areta
All right, we just watched a very interesting one. I don't know if it was done on purpose, but I, I didn't notice the audio. But then again, it made it very interesting and very good for me because I like the story. I like the fact that, you know, uh, the sound wasn't there because at first I was, it was off. But then as I was getting into it, I actually like that. I like the fact that the sound was in there. And one thing that I also like is the fact that it was shot black and white. I don't know if it was shot black and white, but I also like the fact that it was black and white. Now, my only concern that I have with that is, I mean, it's not a concern. I think it's just a choice of the director, but I wish he showed us, you know, the face of those two women. Because if we could have put, you know, two and two, like both of them are maybe the same woman, that would have been great. You know, at least we could see their faces. I think it would have made this like really amazing. So yeah. Now the next one that we're gonna be watching is "En Palabras de Otro" by Thomas Arena. José, le quedó grande darnos amor. Le quedó grande ser un papá. Quien le dijo a usted que era yo el que tenía que rogarle porque hiciéramos vainas, porque saliéramos por ahí. Eso era su responsabilidad. Pero bueno, usted siempre fue así. Y ya, yo pensaba que para estar bien conmigo mismo tenía que estar bien con usted. Como si esas dos cosas fueran de la mano o algo así. Y ya me di cuenta que no. Que si usted no está interesado y nunca lo estuvo, yo no tengo por qué estarlo tampoco. Igual ya no nos vemos, usted está en sus cosas. Yo estoy en las mías. ¿Cuál es el punto, no? Como de seguir sufriendo por cosas que ya pasaron. Lo mejor es que usted siga haciendo lo que hace y yo haciendo lo que yo hago. Ok, so, en palabras de otros by Tomás Uredo, and hopefully, I'm lo siento if I messed up your name, but hopefully I didn't. Um, some notes that I really enjoyed, first off, the first focus is on this older gentleman that's listening to this person, I guess the narrator that's behind the camera that's talking, or that's what we think. And then the camera slowly shows or reveals that the person's actually have a conversation behind him. And I love the fact that this almost feels like you're you're like the person that you thought was, you know, being spoken to was actually more of a spectator. Like we were showing that expression of this gentleman that's like just getting all the information of this character that's venting out how he feels about his father. We thought that he was the father the whole time, but it wasn't. So I love that twist. I really enjoyed that there was no music involved. There was just the voice of this conversation on the phone. So I really appreciate how this film really like drew, drew you into it. You're like, who is he talking to? Why is this guy not you know, expressing anything? But, uh, but you found out that it was because he was just listening, just like we were listening. You know, we couldn't really do much. So I really enjoyed this film, something very simplistic, but yet very powerful and, and especially the dialogue that the character is expressing. So great job. So next up, we're going to be having El Ventana. That's by Juan, I'm going to, oh wait, Juan Sebastian Bautista Pulito. All right, here we go. Los vecinos no han llegado. ¿Será que vienen ahorita? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasa si yo voy a hacer el resto? Pues que quería seguir en las mismas. ¿Sí? ¿Mendigando por un techo y un plato de comida? Farina. Ella nos lo debía. Y deje de mirar esa ventana que lo hecho no se va a retroceder.
Alrighty, well, this one was definitely interesting. What I liked about it is that you were bold enough to try to go for the, the one shot. In short form, I'm just gonna tell you, it usually doesn't work unless you've had years of practice. And if you guys are having years of practice and that's your product, you guys still have to practice some more. Trust me, because that is something that's hard to master by the masters to get the one shot done. Uh, OK Go is one of the most like respected groups on the planet that does one take music videos in every single form and that conversation comes up with every single mentee that i have so just make sure that if you're gonna do the one shot it, you better make it count time is another essence using your uh cine club uh logo would have helped if you probably overlaid it and especially with the one take you have a lot of time in between throw the credits in there Throw the, 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 the logo, throw, the, throw it up in a bug, put it in the corner somewhere. Make sure it just flies in and flies out. It won't disturb the story as much as you might think it does. I understand what you guys were trying to do with the big reveal at the end because it will only work in this one shot style because you're basically just grabbing the same point of view. But it's, 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 a, little, it's, it's a little tricky and also it's very easy, it's very difficult the word, not easy to pull off is what I was trying to say. But otherwise, the sound was pretty decent. Um, sound design definitely will help in this and also speed the progression. You could actually start it with the title of the project with sound being laid under it and going into it. So, all right, so the next project we're actually gonna introduce right now is Cine Para Tres, submitted by Mauricio Rengal. All right, guys, we just got done watching Cine uh, Para Tres, and that was actually a very good one. But, you know, the time that it was given was one minute, and it was it exceed those one minute. If you have stopped that, move, that short film to like the one minute, it could have made this great, because I felt like the story was really good and interesting up to the one minute. And if you just like stop right there, I would have definitely chosen it as the best one. But because it exceeded and it made the story a little complicated. So 
But then again, I think it was really great. It was well shot. The cinematography was actually amazing. Even the acting was actually great too. So yeah. Now the next one that we're gonna be watching is called David by Daniel Ruiz. So I'll see you guys there. Pues sí, me parece normal. Fue lo primero que encontró. Yo sé lo de. Pues sí, he estado ocupada haciendo otras cosas. Ja, ¡Qué madre tan idiota tenemos en esta casa! Ah, perdón, pues entonces encarguese usted el niño. Pues lo haré porque yo no voy a permitir que mi niño crezca acá como un desviado. Eso sí, no, acá. David, venga para acá. David. David. All right, we just watched David by Daniel Ruiz. And I just gotta say, this film uh, was one of my favorites. I'm um, just saying. But uh, I enjoyed it because of the subject matter of the boy that, because he was playing with dolls, the parents like started arguing and presuming that, you know, well, what are you doing? You're raising him wrong and all of that. And then the poor kid goes to his room and, you know, tries to block off with his imagination. And I love the, the way that you depicted him zoning out of his parents by having the sound. You know, because a lot of times we see children that are traumatized and sometimes they just have to separate themselves from the real world with something. And so, for instance, it was him putting on that box like he was going into space or something like that. Um, so great work with the story. I loved it. Um, I love the theme as well. Um, I guess the only things I would have to say is just the sound at the end just uh, got very high and I'm sure it went a little over the balance that should have been so I guess just trying to keep the sound like on its and it's you know not going over the top because sometimes with the speakers or even in films and other film festivals that can be an issue so make sure to just keep it balanced out but besides that um, also with the lighting um, if there was a little bit more lighting I think that the focus would have been a lot better but uh, but besides that, with everything that you were able to, to do with the story and the film, being able to bring it out, I think that was superb. And also the actors were great and the kid that played him, he did a great job. So great job with David. And uh, I appreciate it and I love it. Emocionados porque fuimos eh, nominados dentro de la selección oficial de este festival. El festival se llama IFO. Es un festival que pues, eh, participa en la exhibición de productos alrededor del mundo y afortunadamente pues nuestro, nuestro producto clasificó. Hay varias categorías dentro de este festival y decidimos participar dentro de la categoría Film Minuto. Decidimos lanzarnos a hacer una producción de los años 80, finales de los 70. Este producto cuenta la, la historia de Antonio, un, un hombre que deja pasar el, el amor de su vida en su momento y eh, por dos años tiene un sinfín de lecciones que lo único que lo dejan es un arrepentimiento por tratar de recuperar ese amor que dejó. Todo el sector cinematográfico en, en, en Villavicencio y en el departamento se, se está, ahora sí se está haciendo notar y estamos haciendo cosas más importantes que nos está llevando la industria a un reconocimiento ya internacional. La invitación realmente es a seguir haciendo todo el tiempo, seguir contando nuestras historias, también seguir jugando con lo que nosotros siempre hacíamos, eh, contar nuestro cine con las uñas, contar el, el cine de lo que podemos. Hola. Soy yo, Antonio. La verdad, ya han pasado ya dos años dos años buscando y me siento igual tú eres mi casting perfecto Antonio Flor vuelve conmigo lo siento pero ya es tarde para los dos 
Adiós. All right, so what I really like about this one, all fundamentals of filmmaking are incorporated. Sound, pristine, very, very great. I love the sound. What I didn't like is about when you have on a phone call, it was hard to place if it was in real time or was he listening to a recording? What was going on? Was it something being played over a, a, a speak? Was it an interview that he was reminiscing on? So I didn't understand that, but I'm gonna tell you this, at the end, it closes with her hanging up the phone and looking at her ring. So that means it happened in real time. So if that, if he's going through of all the frustration, and I understand that you were trying to place about, but when you're placing a call and he's going through the emotions of what he's been going through, you, what you definitely want to do is a simple covering it up on the bottom. So if you have the phone and you're just like this, it literally you don't, you didn't know what the heck I'm saying. You don't, you don't know have to, you don't even have to know what I'm saying, but it looks like it could match. Cheat it that way. Don't do that with like just looking at, I, that's the way I would have done it differently. Also, very important, letters, fonts. When you're reading off of a piece of paper, let it like, like for example, like this is gonna look really small to you because I could read it, but the lens can't. Lens cannot read as good as our eyes can. So you have to make sure everything is blown up. And I know that that newspaper, the way it was done, it looked like it took some work to get it done. So if you're gonna do that amount of work, make sure you don't do shortcuts. Make sure the fonts, what she, the criteria that she needed to meet, not the, you know, to, to look, you have to make sure that that's legible enough and all the other stuff can be as small as possible because it doesn't matter, okay? Um, the other thing is the time. You went 14 seconds over. When we get submissions and we say a minute on the, the, uh, the projects that I work on, it gets thrown out. It doesn't even get like, the pitches don't even get looked at if it's over on the time. So you're lucky that the judges are taking into consideration that it was credits. So, and you could have actually put the credits actually rolling in the, in like all TV, if you watch TV shows, they all do it now. Like in the beginning, they either have the flash in the credits and you could actually, you know, put it in there. It might, it might, it also might be a point of view of opinion, but if you really want the important credits to be that important, then it should be somewhere where it's gonna not mess with your time. And the music clearance is gonna be another thing. I don't know, that sounds like a very popular song. Um, so, um, and it's very, very, very well uh, produced. So it might not have the proper clearance. So just make sure you have the paperwork because I had a project pulled, be pulled because the director decided to go with a different song than the one that I got clearance for. And then I had to hear it from the studio head and I actually had to go and re, I had to re-edit re -ed and resubmit the project with the other original song that we had clearance for. So, um, and mom, all right. So I, I, was, I, I want to make sure that I hit all the points. Here are my notes. Song clearance, newspaper, voice over, check, time equal credit, check. Okay, great. So I just wanted to make sure that I get you all the feedback. So now we're going to introduce the next film, Atrapado, submitted by Jair Arango Menes. Meneses? I think I said it right. I hope I said it right. Déjeme salir. Usted es libre. ¿Por qué estoy aquí? Porque usted lo decidió así. ¿Por qué sigo aquí? Es su decisión. We just got done watching uh, Petrapado, 
and that was very interesting i love the visual aspect of it you know the color correction and all of that was actually great it makes you think that this guy is somewhere where he doesn't want to be you know and now going from now you know as a storyteller i would love to just see a little more of that world you know where it is at so you know for example just him being cage or in prison feel like he's in prison with something in his hand you know trapping him you know something like that would make it better so yeah and now we're going to be watching you know the next movie we're going to be watching is appointment letter Okay, so we just finished Appointment Letter by Yigas Yudav. I hope that's right. I said it right. But um, some points that I do want to make up before going to the good stuff. Uh, the knocking. There was a lot of knocking in the beginning and also just black. So I was like, okay, it did get me interested. I'm like, okay, what am I going to see? The only problem is that it did go over time by like 11 seconds. So if you cut out probably a lot of the knocking or probably just a simple knock knock, I'm sure that that would have saved you a lot of time and kept everything in, in the timely manner that it needed to be. But besides that, I do enjoy the black and white. Anything with black and white, it feels like it's a stylish type of film, so I really enjoyed that. Love the twist that, you know, the appointment is actually his death and he's gonna see it. So that was really cool. Um, also, I thought too, because of the timing with the knock, uh, you can also kind of insert the music a little sooner so that we can get into it a little bit more. Um, and probably more of like a slow fade right into it, and then boom, you have the reveal and everything else. But uh, besides that, great job. I enjoyed it very much. So next up, we're gonna have Navid by Vera Productions. Here we go. कल से तुम्हें आने की जरूरत नहीं है ये लो किताबें और स्कूल जाओ चलो अब जाओ सर चले फ्लाइट का टाइम हो रहा है All right. Well, I got a lot of notes for this one. All right. Actually, I don't have a lot of notes for this one. You guys stayed under the time limit. Congratulations. I love that you stayed under the time limit. So um, the next thing is, is that, and, and it's particularly that you added the title and the credits to it. Awesome. Sound design, amazing. Love how you dirty that frame. If you guys don't understand what dirtying that frame means, you put something in front of it that matches the scenery and you dirty the frame. It looks nice, it's full. That's a, that's a technique that I love when I'm producing. It's one of the things when I see a camera operator that knows how to, that camera, camera operator or cinematographer that knows how to dirty your frame, I, you go straight up to the top of my list. So whoever made that, cam, that call or that camera shot, Awesome, uh, great, use, great use of a stabiliz stabilizer, whether it was your, if it was a software based or you guys did it afterwards in post, still great use of it. It really kept it fluid 
and nice and flowing and match the audio um, the audio uh, story that was being told. I liked the color that was used when I actually got understood that Naveen is the little boy from the beginning of the story reading a letter reminiscing of his life when he was told to take a different path. So that was awesome. Um, just for words to the wise, um, I, I was able, you guys did such an effective job telling the story that when the captioning was mistakenly represented, I don't know if it got lost in the translator. I don't know if you guys used a, a third party to use a software base that did it automatically for you and you trusted the software. Never trust software. Get somebody, it, get somebody that's a cousin that knows enough English because it's being a bilingual person, things get lost in the translation so many times. But I'll tell you, because you guys did an effective job at telling the story, that's the reason why I was able to follow along. So congratulations on doing that. It made all it made all the difference in the world, trust me. So, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce the next project that we have in the pipeline. And it's actually called Roommate, submitted by Jahira, Jahira and Chasi. I hope I'm saying that right, Jahira Chasi. Please don't crucify me if I'm doing the wrong thing, saying it the wrong way. Nanook, venga a comer chiquito. Venga. Wow, that was an interesting one. I think that one was really well executed. The story was on point. The cinematography was actually better than I was expecting. For a one mini short film, like, I feel like everything was correctly done for this one. And one thing that I have to say is that blew my mind is just the story, how it was just flowing, you know, you get stuck in the story until the end of the story, it leaves you the aspect of, you know, like the desire of wanting more. So yeah, I really, really actually like that one. And the next one that we're gonna be watching is called Road Trip by film Road Trip by Jose Wilfred Lopez Morales. So great job on that film. Uh, some notes I would have to say is I would love if all of the shots were done in the daytime because uh, the knife scene like I was like okay that's knife with blood. Um, I guess it was, you were trying to convey like it got really dark but I think if everything was left in the daytime that would have been great uh, but I did love the cinematography it was amazing especially when you got the shot that's going up and you're seeing all the trees. I love that shot. And I love also the fact that with this short, there were just small clues that were shown. Little, little by little is progressing and then you found out, oh, I see a hand, someone died. So that was really cool. I really enjoyed um, little things like that where you're kind of discovering as an audience, like what's happening? Is it something happy? Nope. 
it's a murder scene, so that's pretty good. So I enjoyed that. Also love the music or the song that you picked because the song was kind of like the clue. I was listening to the lyrics. I'm like, okay, someone's being eaten. Okay, this is a horror movie. So I enjoyed that. And also the the way the, the mood of the song kind of brought this tone to the film was a great job. So awesome job to that. And I guess that concludes our film festival. Just want to thank everyone who has submitted. Great job for making 2021 for uh, this film festival to be something memorable. And hope that you guys will join next year. So now we're going to take it away to Nilo and Devon. Take it away, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and filmmakers around the world, it's time to announce the winners of the One Minute Short Film Competition. And of course, the third place winner of the One Minute Short Film Challenge goes to... And the third place goes to... Roommate! Submitted by... Jajira Tasi. Congratulations. Congratulations to the third place winner. You deserve it. And now we announce the second place winner of the competition. And our second place winner goes to Navi, submitted by Viera Productions. Congratulations to our second place winners. You deserve it. Well, stay tuned because we'll be announcing the best short film of this competition. The reason why we decided to do this challenge, this one minute short film competition, is to see where filmmakers stand out. I just wanted to see how they can tell a great story in one minute with the equipment that they have, with the editing software that they have, with all the pre-production knowledge, production and post-production. Nowadays, anybody can do a short content or short film, comparing us back in the days before. The second reason why we decided to do this competition is if, if you can tell a great story. Besides the cinematography, besides the lighting, besides the sound, besides all that, all what we wanted for this competition is the story. If you can say something great in one minute, I, can wait to, I cannot wait to see why you, can tell, why you can tell something in the long run. And making this short film competition is just a practice, just to see how filmmakers stand out, you know, with the equipment that they have from cell phones to cameras equipment from the reds, the black magics, any kind of equipment. And now we announce the best one minute short film of this competition. First place is given to En Palabra de Otro by Tomás Oreno. Great job. Y me siento igual. Tú eres mi casting perfecto. Antonio. Flor. Lo siento, pero ya es tarde para los dos. Adiós.
Now, storytellers, creators, filmmakers, now we want to introduce to you the International Film Operations Event. <laughs> What we shoot, son? Movie. That's the only thing we shoot is well, movies. Well, we got here. You can shoot a video. You can shoot a video. But we shoot movies. That's movies. the difference. Oh, movies only, bro. Scene one, shot three, take four, <laughs> sorry, action. Action. 